So when it comes to changing CSS inside a website, we can do so in a couple of different ways using JavaScript. Now, it is important for me to mention that when we change CSS using JavaScript, we don't make changes to the actual CSS style sheet that we might have applied to our website. Instead, we do actually make changes to the style attribute inside the element that we're trying to change the CSS of meaning that if I were to go inside the example here from the previous episode, if we go down to, for example, the H1 tag that I have down here and apply a style attribute, which we can set a color to, for example, red, then you can see I now changed the, the text color inside the website to red, but I did so by using the style attribute inside the element. And this is what happens when we change CSS using JavaScript inside a website. So just to make it clear, we don't change actual CSS inside a style sheet, we simply change it inside the element itself, which by the way, is always going to override what you have inside the style sheet. So if you made the text green inside a style sheet and it loaded up as green, then it's going to become red because the style attribute is going to override the CSS style sheet. So just be aware of that. Now the process in order to actually change CSS using JavaScript, we can do so in a very simple way. So if we'll go inside the console and refer to the H1 tag that I just made into a red color, I can go ahead and say we have a document dot query selector parentheses and simply refer to an H1 tag inside the website because I only have one inside my example here, so I didn't need to include a class or anything. Then what we can do in order to actually see the CSS before we actually change it, I'd like to show you how to actually just see it. We can go ahead and say dot style and then simply run it. So using the style property, we can actually see all the CSS we have applied in line inside our HTML code or HTML markup inside the website. So right now we don't have anything except for color. So as you can see, we have the color attribute down here. Now what we can do in order to actually change the CSS is we can use this style property because the style property has a lot of different sub properties inside of it. So just to show you, if I were to refer to the same code we just wrote here, I can go ahead and say after the style property, I want to access, for example, the color property inside the styling of this specific element. And then I want to set it equal to something else. So I want to set it equal to green, I can do so. And as you can see, it now turns green. So as you can see, it's actually very simple to change CSS using JavaScript. In this case here, we just changed one CSS property. We do also have a method where we can change multiple CSS properties at once. We're gonna get to that. For now, let's actually focus on changing one CSS property. And as you may notice, in order to change the color of the text, I just simply refer to the exact same property name as we would inside a CSS style sheet, which is color. Now, if we have a word that has multiple words inside of it when it comes to properties. For example, font size, background color, because there's two words, we do so by writing font size with a capitalized uh, letter in the second word. So instead of font dash size, like we would in CSS, we just simply uppercase the first letter in the second and third or fourth word if there's multiple words inside the property name. So it's actually very simple to change CSS and you just need to know about if there's second uh, multiple words, then you just need to uppercase it instead of using a dash. So here I can set it to 20 pixels. And as you can see, it now became smaller because it was larger than 20 uh, pixels before. So it's very simple to change CSS. Now, if I want to change multiple CSS properties at once, if I were to go back to what we just did here, I can use something called CSS text. Now the CSS text property is something allowed for me to simply write a string. So if we want to change two things, the font size and for example, the uh, color, I just need to write it like I would inside a CSS style sheet. If I can actually write it properly here, there we go. Color I can set to red, just to change it back to red. Then I can create a new font size. And in this case, you would actually write it the exact same way as you would inside a CSS style sheet because we're just creating a string that we're going to directly insert inside the style attribute inside the element. Whereas before, we just simply referred to a specific styling. And when we did that, we couldn't write it in the same way as inside a CSS style sheet. So using CSS text down here, you do need to write it the exact same way as inside 
a CSS style sheet. I say that a lot in this episode. So font size, I'm going to make into 40 pixels. And when I run it, you can see that we can run multiple CSS stylings at once inside uh, this specific uh, H1 tag that we selected here. So if we go back to the elements tab so we can see what's going on, you can now see that we have a color and a font size set inside the CSS uh, style attribute we can insert inside an element. And it does in fact change the CSS styling of this website here. Now there is a third method I want to mention because you might have figured this one out already. In a previous episode, not many episodes ago, we did talk about set attribute because what you could technically is I could go ahead and say we want to select the H1 tag and then I want to use the set attribute because we can use that one in order to change or create attributes on a element. In the last episode, we created a hyper reference on an anchor tag, so just an example. So what I can do here is I could essentially say I want to create a style attribute and I want to change it into the exact same thing we have up here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and change the values in here so you can actually see it does work. So the color is going to be, in this case, we could say blue. Then I can set the font size to, and I do actually need to write that properly. There we go, no spelling errors. I'm going to set it to 60 pixels. And if we were to run it, you can now see that this does also work when it comes to changing CSS. Now, I would probably use the CSS text property if you wanted to change a lot of CSS styling because that's the proper way to do it. If you just need to change one CSS styling, don't use CSS text because there's higher chance that you make an error and then the entire CSS code or the CSS markup is going to be wrong. So you want to make sure if you just need to change one property that you use the style and then the name of the property you want to change, which is also much more simple, I think. So this is how you change CSS properties. I don't think I have anything else to show when it comes to changing CSS properties. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode.